Good evening, Bev. Well, this was a video that showed a suspect, a 24-year-old man, being taken into the office area of a police station with a black plastic bag over his head. Uh, in the video, you can then see um, people putting other plastic bags over his head and tying them off and, and uh, allegedly trying to suffocate him. And it is alleged that these people are police officers. Uh, then it's really confronting over the next couple of minutes because you see this 24-year-old man struggle. Uh, he is sobbing. Eventually, though, there is silence. Uh, and then the police officers, uh, the, the people alleged to be police officers, uh, can then be seen trying to revive this man. So it is a very confronting video. It has gone viral around Thailand. It was shared on a Facebook page by a lawyer who says it was leaked uh, to them. Uh, and it has really got this uh, people in this country demanding answers. They want to know why this occurred. Uh, it's alleged that the during the uh, confrontation there is also someone trying to extort money out of this uh, alleged suspect. Uh, so there are five police officers now who have surrendered. They have been charged with murder by torture. But there remains two very senior police officers, Bev, on the run tonight. So let's talk about one of them. He goes by the name of Joe Ferrari. Just who is he? Well, this is police colonel Titasan Utanapon, and he, until very recently, until this video came out at least, was the chief of a police station around three hours north of Bangkok. But since that video had uh, appeared, he's been stood down uh, and is now uh, somewhere in Thailand. The police are trying to track him down. During the course of the investigation so far, they have done a raid on his home, uh, or at least a home that is believed to be a weekender. It's worth $2.5 million, Bev. And uh, also on the premises, there was a garage with 29 luxury cars, including a Lamborghini. There's video of the that uh, search that is out on the internet as well and the view views on that are also racking up with people asking how is it that a police officer can afford a 2.5 million dollar home a weekend home at that and 29 luxury cars extraordinary indeed police have also uh, been accused of brutality at uh, many of the street protests uh, how's that played out and has there been have there been calls for those police to be held accountable well, Bev, it depends who you talk to on this one. There's a group of protesters who have been going out almost every day here in Thailand uh, to demand that Prime Minister Prayut Chanacha stand down over his handling of the pandemic and the slow vaccine rollout here. Just 8% of the population is fully vaccinated. Uh, then they say the police have been violent towards them with uh, rubber bullets, water cannon uh, and tear gas. But uh, the police say that the protesters have been throwing bricks, explosive devices, firecrackers uh, and all sorts of projectiles. So there is certainly violence going on on the streets at some of these protest sites. But it depends who you talk to as to who's starting it. Uh, there are certainly uh, questions about whether the police use of force is proportionate to uh, the protesters' uh, uh, um, methods. Uh, but a police officer I spoke to today said, well, what do you expect us to do? We're not just going to stand there as people are throwing explosive devices at us. We are following international protocols and we are doing the right thing. Yeah. Talking of the protests, of course, they're around COVID. It does seem that the outbreak, the current outbreak has slowed a little. Bev, there is some slightly encouraging news. We were seeing case numbers around the 20,000 mark for the past couple of weeks. They've now dipped below to sort of 17,000 and 18,000. It's a little early, I would say, to say that they've dropped right off, uh, but it, it is encouraging. The other encouraging number is that the number of daily recoveries uh, is much bigger than the number of daily infections. So that has got to ease some pressure on the hospital system here, which has really been struggling. There's the hospitals are full, the field hospitals are full, there's medical hotels, people are at home uh, and having oxygen brought to them by volunteer groups. So this news that the number of recoveries is, in, is higher than the number of new infections is encouraging. But what uh, the health authorities are still concerned about though is the high number of deaths today. There was 229 deaths and we've seen the number of daily deaths in Thailand above 200 for quite some time now. Yeah, still quite disturbing numbers. Thanks so much, Ms Owen. Thanks, Bev.